once again for the Bitmart Brain Trust. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Ryan, and I can't do this show alone, even though, you know, I can talk forever and ever, but I can't give the kind of insight that my co-hosts, my brethren, my cohorts here on the Brain Trust can. You know them, you love them. He's the host of the daily Crypto Watch and Crypto Conversations. It is Nathan Simone. Hi, Nathan. Hey, what's happening? We also got uh, our best friend here, Koichi Ebay, who is definitely the D-Gen out of the group. I wouldn't know anything really about NFTs or Cardano if it wasn't for him. Koichi, how you doing? Doing great, man. Ready to talk some about NFTs and, you know, crypto news and, yeah, have fun, you know, talking about this amazing, sometimes crazy industry, <laughs> blockchain. Yeah. Always crazy. Always crazy. Sometimes amazing. That's the way that I flip it, reverse it, Willy Wonka style. And yeah. one of the headlines that really got us today was actually, you know, because Matt does the non-fungible news uh, on NFT 101. So if you're looking for your daily dose of NFT news, which sometimes can be hard to find around the internet, okay? In my opinion, quality news. That's what you'd want to listen to. The reason we were brought here together today for this brain trust to discuss this sort of NFT news was... Um, that Snoop Dogg continues to make <laughs> death row records into an NFT label. Like it, it, it just, it blows my mind. Kalichi, I want your opinion on this of where it's going. Cause there's so many topics to go off of this, but if you, let's say even you weren't a fan of gangster rap or anything like that, but if you saw how death row records was founded in the nineties, as just a music label as any music label is, to think that 30 years from then it would be an NFT label, of course, NFTs didn't exist until a couple of years ago. It's right. so weird. It's like mind blowing. It's like Kraft Mac and Cheese becoming a, a <laughs> furniture company or something. Like that. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming out of left field. What are your thoughts on this, Kalichi? Because this is an interesting story. It is. It is. It is an interesting story. And like you said, no one. No one saw it coming, but I mean, we, we already knew that, you know, Snoop Dogg was, you know, big into NFTs, into the metaverse. Um, um, but this move is actually a very, very, um, I think a very, very historic move in a lot of ways, because when you think about, when you think about the, the, the idea here is that, you know, those like, you know, early music or, something that was tied to um, Snoop Dogg's, you know, like, like rise to fame can now be like an NFT. Like that is something that a lot of people who are Snoop Dogg's fan or just people who see the value of, you know, him and his brand will like to own. Like it's almost like owning a, like a, a piece of uh, history, you know, and, you know, obviously where NFT comes in is now this is in the blockchain, it's verified, you're the owner. And that can be, you know, like traded, you know, anywhere around the world. But just basically, you know, just having that like piece of history now in the blockchain um, and where, you know, anybody like fans, you know, of Snoop Dogg or just um, those early music and upcoming music as well can own. Um, that is pretty remarkable. Yeah. And it's interesting because Snoop Dogg is like, he's not unique among celebrities and liking NFTs. You know, me and Matt have discussed um, on the minor leagues and elsewhere that, you know, a lot of people in the sports industry or sports, sports arena, sorry, sports field, I'm, sports is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> a lot of people in sports, such as Tom Brady, have gotten into NFTs because collectibles are a big thing in the sports world. Right. What's interesting about Snoop Dogg is not only has he had his hand like in so many things, like and in so many industries throughout his entire life, it actually goes a little bit deeper and kind of more intimate than that, Kalichi, because his son, um, who you recently told me was named Champ Medici or Champ Medici, however you pronounce it, uh, he is actually really, really big into Cardano NFTs, specifically a collection called Clay Nation. Do you know a little bit more about that and how how likely is it that Snoop Dogg got big in NFTs because of his son versus the other way around? I mean, that is actually, you know, it is, you know, it is understandable in a lot of ways because like most of the um, like technology obviously is being um, consumed or uh, adopted earlier by, you know, 
like millennials or just you know younger like younger people um and i guess this is this is a way for snoop Dogg to kind of be a part of you know you know tap into his youth you know a little bit you know to be a part of that because um i mean obviously like his son will have told him that this is very cool this is very innovative check it out you know look at it and um i i i mean i, I would say I'm not that surprised that his son like kind of introduced him to it, but um, being a businessman himself, he, he probably saw this as an opportunity, you know, to get in on the ground floor of something that could, you know, be um, the next, I guess, great technological breakthrough. So, um, but yeah, like you said, um, like they, they, I think they're pretty bullish on on a, a collection in Cardano uh, called Clay Nation or Clay Mates, and you know they've been kind of being like a like a brand ambassador in a lot of ways for that collection you do a lot of collaborations you do like irl like events like in real life events um you know they do like music collaboration you know all sort of things and those those types of things is why nfts are so valuable because if you once you have celebrities and like collaborating you know who knows they might put like a clay nation on a on a, one of their brand um like you know um t-shirts or like hats or whatever like those types of things like slowly start adding um value to the to the clay nation nft because you know so that's that's i mean that's that's pretty remarkable and you've you've kind of been in this space you were in this space earlier before me kalichi i'm interested if you know the history of this maybe you don't was clay nation as popular before snoop Dogg's son got involved because I, I imagine that boosted the brand tremendously just like you know having seth green and a lot of other celebrities go into bayc it just it popped it off right because right. people know a celebrity as a type of you know personal brand if you will and then anytime it's associated with another brand um it tends to pop off right um apparently again i don't know this for sure but i think there was some like maybe in the past there was like a cartoon or something that is like named clay nation or something um i need to look into that but i i, I thought that was kind of one of the things where you know they um i think either snoop dogg or snoop dogg's son you know said oh, they, they were a huge fan of that particular like cartoon in the past and kind of clay nation is kind of a you know, bringing that back, you know, you know, to live, you know, in a, in a, in a blockchain NFT way. And, you know, and I think one of the early um, NFTs, like Clay Nation, like, you know, characters was like a dog or, and I think they, they made like a, like a, like a customized Snoop Dogg Clay Nation, you know, character. And, and during that time, a lot of celebrities, we saw a lot of celebrities that were like kind of adopting like NFTs. For example, you see Mike Tyson, uh, he will like, you know, promotes like an NFT. Oh, you, he just changed his profile picture to this particular NFT and stuff just blows up. You see, you know, you know, Justin Bieber will do the same thing. You know, you see Steph Curry and a lot of celebrities were getting into the NFT space during that time period. And for whatever reason, maybe, as I said, maybe it was that, you know, play that cartoon or just, you know, maybe them stumbling upon one of those NFT that looks like Snoop Dogg. And, you know, he just kind of gravitate towards that. And for whatever reason, he just he just went all in and started like you know working with them, be to the spaces with them, like retweet their posts, and it just kind of blew up from there. And I think obviously that led to like maybe calls with the Clay Nation founders, you know, to do some collaboration, and that led to a call with Charles Hoskinson, and everything just kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> crazy i'm trying to imagine that call uh, between charles hoskinson and snoop dogg if that actually uh, <laughs> does exist it's I mean, funny man charles it's hoskinson funny. is a nice guy i mean i've i've been on twitter spaces with him i haven't interacted with him uh obviously and we saw him at consensus i remember that was uh that was a highlight of us being at consensus Kalichi. right but um you know one how long until um Snoop Dogg and Clay Nation uh, do a collaboration with Play-Doh because that seems like a, a natural oh, fit. Oh, <laughs> that's actually not bad. That's actually that's actually in line of hey. hey, that's 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 what makes NFT exciting. Like those types of things. <laughs> Play-Doh. I I don't eat the Play-Doh, kids. Uh, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> well, then, you're you know, not the, the supposed the, to eat Play-Doh. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to make some calls. Smells so good too. They, uh, I remember they used to have one that uh, was like spaghetti and meatballs, and um, 
it actually smelled like it, which actually is kind of terrifying to, to think about at the moment. Oh, but that, yeah, they, they clearly say, just like the Sharpies, right? Remember in school, they used to have the Sharpies that would smell amazing, like, you know, lime and fruit and all sorts of oh, things. Yeah. But then you're not supposed to sniff Sharpies because inhalant abuse, yada, yada, yada. We get it, people. I'm going to buy as many Sharpies as I want. <laughs> what's what's more interesting about this, um, Kalichi, was another thing that came up. So Snoop Dogg seems like he's kind of the opposite of Kanye West. Kanye West does not like NFTs. We went mm-hmm. over this on our first episode ever of the Brain Trust. Um, he claims that he'll never do NFTs. I, I'm sort of doubtful yeah. of that. I think he's just like waiting to do something really, really crazy with N- uh, NFTs, like really, really innovative that definitely has a real world use case. But right. obviously, once again, I don't know him. Um, Snoop Dogg, he is known for his heavy cannabis usage, and he has all sorts of things related to that. He's actually, I believe, still involved in a play to earn game called Mobland, in which he has created <laughs> digital weed. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I heard about that, but I don't know the like the intricate details about it. But um, my guess would be some kind of like a branded, like Snoop Dogg branded weed and. Oh, well, that already exists out here in Colorado. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't expect other people to know that. That already exists out here in Colorado uh, and I'm assume California, uh, where he's from, uh, mm-hmm. along with Willie Nelson and Mike Tyson. So, um, yeah, that, that's already a thing. My whole thing, yeah. my, it's just the, the, <laughs> the odd yeah. thing to me was when you create digital, I guess I have almost the same question about when they like, I have a digital sneaker NFT. Uh, on Cardano, I cannot remember what collection it's from, but the digital oh, weed, maybe Just I should I should look at it. I bought it for like six dollars. My whole thing is like, I get creating digital artwork because artwork is two D anyway, and anyways, and it's nice to look at and it's cool to have that NFT. But like right. digital weed, um, you can't get digitally high unless <laughs> I'm missing something here. Like I can't digitally put on my, well, shoe, it could I, uh... be an NFT you buy in exchange for marijuana for actual bud right. or edibles or what have you. Sure. Like that would be the step in my opinion. Um, not speaking from an area of expertise. Nope. Not in the slightest. Um, but <laughs> I, I think that like your sneaker NFT, I we're seeing a lot of fidgetal stuff in the NFT space. And I feel like this is a great step in that direction, especially as marijuana and NFTs kind of get more acclimated state by state. Like I can see California, Nevada, Colorado, um, maybe Massachusetts, because those are, those are the states that have been kind of the thought leaders in the medical and now non-medical marijuana sales in each part, you know, parts of the country that's legal in New York and New Jersey. It's illegal. It's legal. But right now they're still sussing out what a lot of these dispensaries are going to look like. There's not any in New York City, um, unless you know a guy. Unless if they've, they're all medical. Um, in New Jersey, you're starting to see them pop up in different uh, suburbs. We haven't seen one in Jersey City or Hoboken or Newark yet. There's still it's di- it's district by district, uh, county by county. So that's where it is with that. So I think this would be a huge weapon to help draw digital, you know, more tech-based businesses and more marijuana-based businesses into each uh, part of the country where it's legal. Yeah, and, and it's an interesting thing. Kalichi, I just actually looked up my sneaker NFT. It's from the S, uh, it's from the Soul sneaker, but it's not spelled Soul. It's like S-0-1-E. Uh, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. I have not. S-0-1-E sneakers. Um, anyways, I own it, so... Sorry, everybody. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Matt, yeah, you make a great point about this this interesting thing between NFTs, people possessing NFTs as a digital object, and then translating it into real world experiences. And I know that you are super big on this, um, Kalichi, about you know the joke is like when utility, right? When utility, right? <laughs> What what are what what's actually I'm actually interested in knowing this Kalichi because once again you're you're the most knowledgeable at all this. What do you think is a good real world uh, use case like utility that you've seen in NFTs, regardless of the blockchain, that like kind of sets the standard for what smaller projects can do? Because it's it's one thing to like 
go backstage and meet Snoop Dogg or something like that. And you have to pay millions of dollars for this NFT. That's kind of the same as like buying a huge Ticketmaster package or whatever. But like, if I, if I could exchange my $6 sneaker NFT for a sh- uh, a, a pair of shoelaces. Yeah. That's like right. super small, but the fact that I could get like a pair of shoelaces, like that's just a teensy tiny step in a utility case for why you'd want to own a certain NFT. I'm interested in the utility cases you've seen and, and, how big that is in NFT projects moving forward. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, a lot of use cases. Um, I mean, you know, one thing that just kept coming to my head when you were talking about uh, sneakers, uh, sneakers NFTs is that, you know, for example, like AR, VR, right? Like virtual reality, um, you know, I, I, like, met, like Meta, like Facebook, they can create something to where like these, like, like sneakers, like, are like digital, like sneakers where you can like wear them in the in the like in the metaverse you can like run around with them you know you put on your your oculus or whatever vr stuff and you just you know, like use it in the in the in the in virtual reality right and you because i've actually seen like some games where you play like you're actually like you're running and you're actually running in the game like as a like an avatar like a 3d avatar and you're actually wearing the sneakers that you bought like you know that's that's uh that's a utility you know like in a in a, in a game like that and you know, you know, you can use it to go to places, you know, go to parties, and you know, hey, you're rocking this cool-looking, you know, like item. Um, so it's is that's kind of, and again, it all depends, if, you know, on the brand, you know, that you're investing in. You know, if you're investing in a team that's capable of developing that kind of uh, a product, that can become very valuable in the future as you know NFT becomes mainstream and VR becomes mainstream, metaverse become becomes mainstream. You know, you're gonna be like an early adopter you know, in that case, but one of my, one of my most favorite use cases of NFTs now, and this is something I'm actually, you know, planning to incorporate in my own, like, game that I'm creating for my own project is, um, for example, because uh, I know that a very good example of a use case is if you're playing a game, you know, like a web a PC game that is, in this case, connected to the blockchain, you can do things like, um, say, for example, there's like a building, Right, there's a building called like N Maker, like a Cardano, one of the Cardano popular Cardano projects, and I can I can program it to where to where like you can only open the door if you have an NFT that's you know in our case is a ghost with a chain on the neck that has uh, an N Maker logo. You can only open that door and explore that particular you know building if you have that NFT in your wallet. So it's going to read your wallet. If you don't have it, you can't open the door. And, you know, you can still play the game, you can still, like, accomplish the missions and go to the next level, but you can't find the content in that building without having the NFT. So those type of in-game utilities, um, or, for example, like a treasure chest, you, you can't open a treasure chest unless you own a particular NFT. And, uh, you know, so there's some utilities that you can do, you know, like that in-game across different blockchains, Cardano, Ethereum, and so on and so forth. So... I think we're going to get to a point where, you know, a lot of these big companies, they may be working on this now, you know, without telling anybody, but, you know, I think that is something that we eventually, that we eventually, you know, come to life. And like I said, I'm currently working on something similar. So I'm, I'm pretty sure other people, other like bigger companies are thinking about the same thing as well. Well, I, I have a question on that, Khalid, because both of us play Madden and both of us play the 2K right. series of games. The... Last few years, EA Sports and 2K Sports, the two that are basically running point on all aspects of sports gaming, have been implementing pay-to-earn, pay-to-play aspects and functions. Right, right. Using Madden Ultimate Team or 2K, you know, there's different levels for each game, but there's a certain level of access that you need to pay for. Right. How can NFT gaming combat those comparisons? Because when you say like you need to have this NFT to unlock this, like I get it as a use case and I get it like just empirically. But if I'm a gamer and I'm like, I can't, you know, I bought the game unless it's a free to free to play game with specific other things. Because that's the route of mobile gaming. Mobile gaming has taken that route for uh, since the advent i would say of modern mobile gaming going all the way back to farmville 
when Facebook was something that people use outside of messengers and uh, right. marketplace. Uh, how do you combat against that? How do you combat against some of the mobile game stigmas that will follow you? And how do you build an audience within something that, and this is not an insult to anybody, but it's ostensibly a niche of a niche because you're on Cardano, you're on, you're, you're making light of the fact that you're on the quote unquote ghost chain. How do you find ways, whether through marketing or content or concept, right. na navigate those waters? That's a very, very like great point that you just brought up. And it's one of the reasons why I think we're going to see like a lot of pushbacks from like, you know, current, you know, you know, like big, like big name companies, you know, big name gaming companies, like, you know, like you said, 2K and stuff um, and Madden you know, and so on, because currently they're, they're in a lot of ways, their business model is like, you know, pay to play or pay to you know, pay to play in a, in, a lot, in a lot of ways. That's how they earn revenue. Um, so going back to a situation where you actually have to um, pay your players, your, your, your players to, to play your game, basically they earn money by playing a game. I don't think that's a model. And that's why I'm not too bullish on the whole play to earn thing, because, you know, in order to, you know, that's trying to disrupt like the, the business model of the biggest game companies out there. Um, so that's an issue, but there's still a lot of ways you can incorporate like NFTs without making it like play to earn. Um, so like a good the example I just gave is, you know, you can still play the game. You know, it's not it's not going to, you know, prevent you from, you know, finishing the game or, you know, doing anything. It could be just, you know, like there's this special level you're not going to be able to access because you don't have an NFT or, you know, in, in, in exchange of you can either get an NFT to open the door or you can acquire like maybe like XP points, you know, by, you know, doing some, some, some stuff, some stuff in the game to get, you know, to the point where you can actually open the door. Or if you have an NFT, boom, it's just quick access. You can just open it. So it's, it's going to be things that the way I see it, you know, it will give you like a slight edge, you know, in the game, but it won't prevent you. It won't prevent you from having fun in the game. You can still play the game, have fun, complete levels, you know, do all kinds of things. And um, I think that's one way to combat it. And another way to combat it is instead of doing the whole, like like I said, play to earn model, you can actually do like a sponsorship model to where like, for example, let's let's give an example of a, like an FPS uh, game, like a first per person shooter game, you know, and you're playing the game and in the beginning of the game, you, you um, like there are five players, for example, and then you choose uh, like an NFT brand before you play the game, like maybe, in Cardano, it'd be maybe Clay Nation, Space Bud, you know, um, um, Nathan, help me here. Like, what are some Chilled, some chilled Kongs? Chilled, chilled Kongs. Kongs. Yeah, chilled Kongs. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, those types of, you know, like blue chip NFTs. And you have them, and you say you select, like, this player, they select, like, one of the, one of the NFTs. Say they select Clay Nation. And you're playing the game, and, you know, you get to a, you get to, a, like, the goal of the game is to get to a door where you know if you have the clay nation nft you can open the door but you have to kind of stay there for like 10 seconds or like 20 seconds and the stuff like the timer just keeps going like this going like this going like this and while you're trying to open the door all the players like your, your like opponents they're shooting at you you know trying to prevent you from opening the door and the point i'm trying to make here is it's it's a fun fps game mm -hmm. but it's it's using blockchain technology and in this case Play Nation will be the person like sponsoring that particular like game. You know, it's like an ad, like an ad. You know, you go in there, you're looking at Clay Nation all the time. And, you know, it doesn't require NFT to play the game, you know, but you just have to select NFT in the beginning and then you just start playing the game and you have fun, but NFT is actually part of the game. So you can, you're not even seeing the NFT, but the owners, the people who created the game are actually earning revenue from like Clay Nation. Hmm. So that's that's another way to go about it. It's almost as if the NFT is behind the scenes, right? And is 
non-fungible. You know, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Kalichi, because one, I didn't know about uh, those two examples. So thank you for explaining that to people. And two, that is the exact same direction that I'm trying to make Matt Graham Cracker coin go. People keep <laughs> saying that it's a rug pull. People keep saying it doesn't exist. People, we are building and this project is going to change the world, okay? I don't like to make grand proclamations, but this Wait, project gra- are, is going to make- they, Are they Graham proclamations? They are Graham yeah. proclamations, okay? <laughs> and I mean, I hate to say this because I get too emotional when I when I say this. This is going to be bigger than Bitcoin, okay? <laughs> so, and that's not a joke, people. You keep spreading the FUD, okay? We're coming out with utility. We're coming out with this stuff. If you dare question us, here's how you know a project is legitimate, Okay. If you dare question us, I will just ban you from all of our social media and telegrams and things like that. There is no questioning the authority of this project. (laughs) Moving on. This is gonna this is gonna end up with Nathan. (laughs) Gonna end up with Nathan getting caught by the French police. (laughs) Unless you want me to mute, you know what, Kalichi? It's not a it's not a rug pull project, and the forty two dollars that we now have in donations are legitimate donations that will be used for the project development. Okay. That's all I want to say about that. Now, Kalichi, now, I think is this, make... this is the coin where it's just me eating graham crackers, right? Like that's... There's a whole host of things. Remember, okay, people complain about crypto dust, right, which is tiny balances left in the wallets. We are actively working on a solution to where you will actually be able to turn that digital dust into real graham cracker dust. Okay? <laughs> and that's just people are spreading the FUD. They're spreading the lies. I'm sick of seeing this on social media. Just wait, people. The bear market is the time when you build, all right? The bear market is the time when you build. That's all I'm going to say about that. I've I've actually already said too much, okay? But we have a lot of investors, some that you would know of. They're pretty famous people, all right? Maybe the wire hasn't come through. Your I'm voice sorry? makes it makes it sound so legitimate. I'm pretty sure people will go on Google to search for Graham, Graham Crackers. Yeah, it's not just Graham Cracker Coin. It's Matt Graham Cracker Coin, and it has yeah. Matt's red hair and his smiling face and a bite out of a Graham Cracker because it's a legitimate oh. project, right? The more you okay. talk about it, the more bullish I get. Yeah, well, Why do you people want to get watch me eat Graham Crackers or have it's Graham not, Cracker it's dust? Not just the logo about is me eating a Graham Cracker, though. Like, it's about that's so much more than Graham Crackers, people. It's about a revolution. <laughs> All right. This is literally what every person who has an and every crypto bros conversation at a bar. This is that distilled. Because it's like, bro, it's called Doge. It's like, okay, so it's a meme. Like, no, it's so much more than that. Elon Musk is like, this is just an internet. No, it's so much more than like. They're just there. They're as they're they're dancing for drinks at that point because they've they've went all in and and they're and they've invested in meme and shit coins, and now and now they're just there dancing right. for Michelob ultras. Yeah, we we need to do a whole episode at, uh, at some at some point, Matt and Kalichi, on uh, kind of the history of rug pulls and you know it seems like common knowledge about what to look out for if a project has utility or or things like that. But you know, in the case of Dogecoin, no shade to Dogecoin, but the way that you knew that it wasn't going to go anywhere. um, And I used to own a little bit of Dogecoin before all the hype. It was because the founders literally founded it and said that it was a joke. That's not something that people made up to spread FUD. Billy Marcus, and I can't remember the other guy's name. They literally said it was supposed to be a joke because they were huge Bitcoin fans and they were crypto fans. So like it being attached to a celebrity and that celebrity happening to be Elon Musk was just nobody. That was a wrinkle in time. Nobody could have predicted that, but Right. Kalichi, getting back to what you were saying about NFTs being seamlessly integrated into a game, I think right. that actually segues really, really nicely into what's happened in the last week, which you brought up, you brought to my attention because I'm not a huge social media user in general. Um, but Facebook and Instagram now allow you to, like, they either allow you to share NFTs or you can actually connect your wallet and you can hold NFTs on your Instagram account. It's something like that. Is was what I remember reading. Can you? Right. What do you think yeah. about? That's that's. I mean, I mean, I saw that coming a long time ago, and you know, even when NFTs just came out, a lot of people started like making like you know rumors about it. Like this is definitely a, a play for for a platform such as Instagram that is like like pic, like picture like focused, um, or just or obviously video as well. But you know, pictures was kind of how you know, the claim to fame, and then they started adding other, like, you know, media. 
but you know it's just a way for you to display your nft collection you know on your instagram you know you can connect your metamask wallet um and i, I think on coinbase wallet and um i think it's that dapa, dapa wallet or something um but you can, yeah you can just you know if you have your nft stored in your coinbase account um coinbase wallet or your metamask wallet you can now like you know pretty much show it um displayed on your on your instagram account um that's that to me speaks a lot of volumes about this um whole nft um movement or trend or whatever because if they can do that there is actually something there like and that's the thing about nft that you know trips a lot of people off is that they're not just doing this stuff because it's just uh, a fly by night trend there's technology in, involved you know and you know they're hiring people you know to build this this all these features and stuff you know, you have celebrities, you know, coming in on board, you have like investors investing millions of dollars into NFT technology. And I see uh, my fear for a lot of people is they, they just quickly brush it off. Just like the way a lot of people just brush off like, like body club. It's just a JPEG, right? I did that. And now <laughs> obviously if I bought, if I bought a few of them that could have, you know, paid, you know, like so call it like bets and stuff for a lot of people, but just, understanding that there is something here that you know is valuable and again it all boils down to like ownership ownership digital ownership you know well, yeah and it, it's interesting too because i guess the reason the impetus of why this wanted to push forward was because mark zuckerberg apparently used to play baseball uh when he was very little and he has a rookie card i uh, put it in the chat there in case you want to look at it matt oh i've seen uh, it i i've seen it <laughs> From 1992, little Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> and he sold it for $105,000. So, oh, I, wow. Yeah. And who knows uh, where that went. Um, but so I have one of those of me. Is that, is that Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's real. That's <laughs> little baby Zucks. I have oh, one wow. of those. I will be selling it for 10% of that purchase price. So for $10,000. You can get my childhood baseball card or a photo of me in a similar style from sports, a uh, sport, fake sports illustrated. This is kind of crazy. Actually. Huh? Okay. Or if you, if you'd prefer uh, Matt as he is now, I'm sure that he can wrestle up some baseball gear and find a photographer on Airbnb I can, experiences. I can, and I can have but, it to somebody by the end of the week. They need to pay for the baseball pants though. If the price is right, uh, I'm sure it will be all Mets gear. Did you play for the Mets when you were a little kid? Or? No, it was the St. Michael's Golden Angels. I played for a season and then didn't play baseball until high school. When I was on the junior varsity team, I was actually an athlete in high school at the same weight I am now. So think about that and wonder how the hell I fit in baseball pants. Uh, I didn't. Um, but uh, I had a 570 on base percentage. And a zero batting average because I went to bat four times and I was walked th about three of them. And I had three stolen bases. Wow. You take, you know, I'll say this right now. It takes some balls to steal a base. I'm okay? fast for a fat man. So we are going to give that to you. I, my baseball career, unfortunately, ended at the age of 12 or 11. I think I've talked about this. I got hit in the face, Oof. in the mouth. With a pitch. So it's amazing that I actually have all my teeth. Um, and after that, I said, you know, this baseball thing, it's too dangerous. Uh, I'd rather go hiking in the mountains where there's, you know, bears and mountain lions and things like that. So uh, much, yeah, much safer. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, I, I think maybe I have rookie baseball cards. I'm trying to remember the teams that I played for were actually like, they would try and just like, copy they were like little league version of like they'd copy the teams and is the diamondbacks a team or is, are the diamondbacks a team yes a baseball they play player? in yeah. they play in arizona yeah. there you go so i was on the little diamondbacks even though i did not live in arizona and i've actually never even been to arizona in my life i'd love to go to sedona in case anybody wants to take me there so um yeah so that that was the whole impetus for mark zuckerberg wanting to do this and uh i haven't logged into Instagram to see this. Um, I actually don't even have a Facebook account, but I'd be interested to know um, what it's like holding it on there. Cause yeah, it's, obviously I, I have light wallets on my phone that I hold NFTs on and I expect like a certain quality from there, but right. I guess 
I guess maybe you'd you'd trust a little bit more or perhaps less, I guess, depending on how you view it, um, the backend integration of these things of like, mm -hmm. how is Instagram holding my NFTs? I, I'm, I assume they're using a, a, a chosen standard for the blockchain space, but right. I, I don't know enough about it, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's something I'm actually going to like read, like read a, a, a lot more on um, just to see how, you know, they, they, they're doing the, the whole thing. And it's, it's fascinating, you know, if, even when you think about like the potential risk involved, you know, obviously, um, just like any other industry, the NFTs, uh, the NFT industry have its fair share of like scammers and things like that. You know, and they know all those, they know all those risks and they still went ahead and, and implemented it. So, um, you know, they are, not, they're just trying to be first movers, I guess, but it's, uh, it's a ballsy move. We'll see how it goes. Now, Kalichi, you didn't answer us before we go on to our last thing. Um, <laughs> do you have a rookie baseball card or ba no. actually basketball was your thing? Do you have a rookie basketball card? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, that's a tragedy. Shame. You should make one right we've now. Got to, we've got to do a BitMart photo day where it's all of us just in ridiculous sitcom-esque situations, just in <laughs> rising in intensity uh, and, like and releasing those as NFTs. Yeah, like Friends or How I Met Your Mother or that new uh, that new hit sitcom, the Jeffrey Dahmer one. That's a sitcom, right? <laughs> kidding it's a horrible tragedy and it's being split um uh, but what's our last topic nathan um you know our last one kalichi it still goes you were actually the one that sent me this that i thought was interesting was um you know continuing our talk about games games implementing nfts and this whole play to earn sort of stuff was that ubisoft which is a major game developer maybe one of the big three or five i'm not sure how many major game developers there are um but I know that I've heard of it. I've seen it on a lot of game welcome screens. It's actually kind of cooled off, perhaps because it's a bear market, but it's it hasn't like eased off the gas pedal. It just says, hey, we're in research mode. Uh, and they were having this NFT project called Quartz uh, that they yeah. were looking at to integrate. You know, I, I know that um, putting NFTs into games is still... Uh, it's it's probably still a little bit more of a technological feat just from a developer perspective. I'm imagining there's a scarcity of developers that know both of these ecosystems to combine them seamlessly. But it right. seems like if you read the news article too, that um, and maybe you could expand more on this because I'm not a I'm not a huge gamer, although I'll be red dead until I die. Um, yeah, yeah. But apparently, <laughs> apparently, there were a lot of people that like told Ubisoft not to do this. And the article even goes into saying the NFT hating community, which <laughs> I, did not, I did not realize was a community. Uh, yeah. I will not be joining anytime soon. But. <laughs> right. It is, it is. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Like there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of like core, like gamers out there that they're, they're not a fan of NFTs. And the reason why is because a lot of uh, quote unquote NFT projects, they're not, they're just, let's just call it what it is. It's like a cash grab. You know, they come in they, and one thing like gamers, one thing they hate the most is if you come in and you promise all this stuff and you don't have a game, you don't have a quality game that they can play, like that just drives them insane. Like, you know, if you, oh, okay, where's the game? You, you're talking about all this blockchain of this ownership and all this stuff. Where is the fun game to play? Like that's all they care about. Um, you know, they're playing the game to have fun. They're not playing the game to quote unquote make money. And I think a lot of these, you know, you know, NFT play to earn project, they really, really kept emphasizing the, 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 the making money part of it and not the fun part of it. Mm. And that's, that's the big problem. You know, it, it has to be, I'm playing a game because I'm, I love the game. I, I have fun playing the game, you know? The other stuff can come later, you know, maybe if I, you know, complete the level, I win an NFT, you know, but that's not the core reason why I'm playing a game. I'm playing because it's fun, it's exciting, and, you know, there's just all these um, cash grabs, you know, just coming up, and I think that's that's what brought up, like, the, the whole, and, um, the, the um, like, NFT uh, hating community, like you said, uh, when it comes to, like, games and blockchain, but you know, the use case is still there. It's just the early founders, they're not, they're not taking the right approach, 
you know, towards the whole thing. It's just money, 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 make money. Um, that's the main motivation. It's just like, they're like blockchain, blockchain developers trying to create a game. They're not like real gamers trying to like integrate blockchain technology. You know, that's the problem right now. So, um, and then you have the other problem that Matt brought up where why should we disrupt our own business model just because we want to implement NFTs? Like, you know, currently we're, we're making revenue, we're making a lot of money, our investors are happy, our players are happy. Why should we switch to a play to earn model when we're currently a pay to win model or something like that? Yeah. And I, you know, we're approaching the end of our time here, Kalichi. We've probably got about five more minutes that we're going to go and then we're going to wrap it up. But, you know, NFT, NFT hating community, probably a little bit of a Debbie Downer. Like I said, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be joining it anytime soon. Uh, Y'all can go off and kind of do whatever you want. I'm wondering if you think of this as maybe like a generational thing and that there's still just not a generation of gamers even coming up that they want NFTs to be part of games. Because as you were saying that, I immediately thought of this about how there are a lot of hardcore gamers, but they don't maybe particularly want NFTs in games. And I thought that's so interesting because I could probably imagine a time when um, there were a lot of gamers who thought that it would be silly to watch somebody else play a game, but now mm -hmm. like Twitch is a huge thing. And right. it, made me, it made me think about how this one Thanksgiving when I was like, I don't know, seven, eight years old, something like that. The big gamer in our family was my cousin, Jake. And he was so good at the Legend of Zelda um, Ocarina of Time on N64 that none of us wanted to play. We just wanted to watch him play <laughs> and like, yeah. participate along. And I thought that was obviously before Twitch. So, uh, I don't think pre-internet, but like very early internet. And I think about how like, oh, well, that's just basically Twitch now. Like you want to have the experience of like dominating this game and like going through it, unlocking everything. But like it would be a lot of effort for you to do it yourself. And I have to believe that when Twitch came out, people were like, God, this is so stupid. You're watching somebody else play a game like this, that, and the other, blah, blah. But now, I mean, people make literally millions of dollars off of Twitch. It's an accepted part of the gaming community. I'm sure there's still people that don't like it or they think that it's stupid, but it's way more mainstream now. Are NFTs and something like that, are they just like, it's just too early. They're not integrated yet. Maybe that's the way to think about it. Yeah, it is. I'm, and and I, I read something a while ago that the, the co-founder of Twitch, like he's invested in like an NFT, you know, like startup or an NFT, like, you know, project, you know. So, I mean, the founder of Twitch is investing in a company, you know, that plans to like use NFT technology. If I'm the players or the NFT hitting community, my question is, I'm going to like, why? Like, why is he doing that? And I think a lot of people in this community, so to speak, I don't know if they ex exist, but if they do exist, is to kind of separate the, the current version of what is happening right now, the cash grabs, the, the, the basically anybody can create a game. Like you can go to like Unity or like Unreal Engine, like Marketplace and just like create assets and just like compile it together and say, oh, I have a game. I have a play to earn game. It's just a cash grab. It's not a fun game. It's just crap, you know. And a lot of people, those gamers, they're using that to judge the NFT technology, not knowing that there's a lot more, you know, that's that's being a player. So um, when that time comes, maybe five years from now, ten years from now, you know, it's 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 gonna be here regardless of what you know what they think. But it's just studying and learning about it as much as you can. I'm I'm only laughing about it briefly, Kalichi, because uh, I currently have some of the best developers in the world on the Unity Marketplace developing the in-game assets to Matt Graham. <laughs> that's, that's so so when you say it's you, you compile together and it's all crap, I don't think that you realize that people work really hard on this stuff. Okay, <laughs> just so to, I mean, if you don't, you know what. If you don't want to build your own graham cracker family uh, factory in a sort of sim city sort of dominator kind of interesting capitalistic game, you don't have to. But that's just one of many things that this project entails. Okay, wow. so, hey, sounds impressive. 
Mac Graham you, Cracker coin, yeah. coin just this entire thing just sounds delightful. Like it's this is all whimsy, but it's the good kind of whimsy. But to address your point and your question, I think it's a matter not only of early adoption and it taking time, but one of the things we've seen is parody. Whether it's in esports or what we've seen with Minecraft, where they've completely banned NFTs outright because they don't want anybody to have a better experience by paying for things that not anybody can have access to. And I think that's the big problem is parody in esports because NFTs can be like PEDs real quick. Like they can turn into unfair competitive advantages for certain players and certain teams, and that would make certain games untenable um, right. or turn into this massive arms race that completely bloats the NFT and esports market and even further dilutes an opportunity for anybody to own those NFTs and it creates an, inv an imbalance in the marketplace and fucks everything up. But also we've got to look at the genuine concerns. Like I like playing Madden, but if I can't play, you know, if I'm playing against a team, it's like if I was playing on all Madden and they were playing on rookie, that's what some of those NFTs from multiplayer games can be or competitive games. Like we don't want that to happen. You don't want your experience to be, you want to have the ability to do the same exact thing as everybody else. NFTs are mostly one of ones. You own that piece of property. It is not communal property that you pay for a piece of. That's what these other games provide. And I'm not caping for that. I find that to be annoying to my wallet and my time and my hardware on my hard drive space. But downloadable content is stuff that everyone has access to. The only limiter is money. NFTs, not only are you still limited by money, but you're limited by quantity because of the scarcity of it all. So yeah. there's so many econo socioeconomic drivers that make it hard for staunch old school gamers or people who believe in equanimity in gaming for that to be a thing. Let, so let, let me just address something real quick before we go. What, one use case I can see like Madden, like how NFTs can be in integrated without like quote unquote, like disrupting the actual gameplay or giving you an unfair advantage is just imagine if like a quarterback, like, you know, um, like, you know, uh, what's his name? Tom Brady, for example, you know, or Lamar Jackson, you know, and you have like, while you're playing the game, like you have this, like, you know, very, very, like, I guess, like cheap, like NFC collections of Lamar Jackson, and they're very, very like affordable, right? You know, it doesn't give you any unfair advantage in the game. You just, you just own a piece of it, right? And in the game, you can, like, the more you play the game, you know, and the more like maybe XP points that you earn, it gives you the ability to like, you know, um, kind of uh, like, like burn or just combine those those smaller smaller NFTs, you know, into like uh, a more a, a shinier like Lamar Jackson. So while you're playing the game, your Lamar Jackson is like unique, like he looks unique, like his body is like shining or something like that. And that you own that, like because you're playing the game, you're getting all this point, and you're able to fuse these like NFT Lamar NFT jerseys, for example. And it, the more you play the game. And the more you acquire those XP points, the like shinier or the better looking your, your quarterback looks. And you're using that quarterback to go to competitions, to win prizes. And you say you're a very good gamer, like that becomes a one of one, like you own that Lamar Jackson NFT. So it doesn't give you any competitive advantage, but it makes that your Lamar character to be very, very unique. And if, you're winning games, you can actually sell it. You know, maybe someone wants to buy it and don't want to go through all that process of acquiring those XP points, you know? So it, there, could be, there could be some value there, is what I'm saying, without affecting the gameplay. Yes, Kalichi. I wanted to end here by saying, <clears throat> I think you've got a lot to say there. And me and Matt have been, or I'm sorry, Matt and I, <laughs> have been discussing esports on the minor leagues. So one, I'd like to invite you as a guest onto the minor leagues to discuss esports, microtransactions, NFTs, things of that nature. Hopefully you'll accept. I'm actually not going to wait for your response yet because the second thing that I'm going to say is if there's any team that needs NFTs virtually for all the help that they can get, it's the Cleveland Browns. I'm done. 
<laughs> Burning your jets. Ugh. On that note, I am going to prepare for the NL wild card series by holding myself in a bunker for three days. So <laughs> y'all don't see me on the Monday edition of the NFN. You know what happened. But thank you to Kalichi eBay and Nathan Simone. As always, we'll be back with another edition of the Bitmart Brain Trust. I think we're going to have a guest on uh, the Bitmart Brain Trust next week, Jessica Brodkin, uh, yep. Mystical Muses, who we already had on NFT 101. But we'll be breaking things down with the stand-up comedian and and slash XCIA uh, employee. So that'll be a fun conversation. But until next time, rate, review, and subscribe to NFT 101, the home of the Bitmart Brain Trust, and also the Crypto Conversations, which is available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever else you put audio into your ears. So long, everybody. Thank you for watching, and thank you for listening. Hello to everybody out there in crypto. Did you enjoy that conversation? I know that I did. It's always interesting to learn more about crypto projects, NFTs, and what is going on in this very unique industry. But now we've got to get some legal stuff out of the way, all right? It's just the way that it is. So I wanted to let you know that all opinions and actions expressed and undertaken by the hosts and guests are individual opinions and actions and do not reflect the views and actions of Bitmart. Bitmart does not guarantee the accuracy, applicability, reliability, integrity, performance, completeness, or appropriateness of this content. The value of digital currencies can go up or down, and there can be a substantial risk in buying, selling, holding, or investing in digital currencies. You should carefully consider whether trading or holding digital currencies is suitable for you based on your personal investment objectives, financial circumstances, and risk tolerance. Bitmart does not provide investment, tax, or legal advice. Use of Bitmart services is entirely at your own risk.